in this module, I want to focus on something called print on demand. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you a quick overview of what print on demand is, why it's something that really every beginner should, you should really consider experimenting with it. It is a great way to be able to start testing and learning the ropes with selling online using something called print on demand. Uh, in this section, you're going to notice that we're going to go through a tour of a couple of print on demand platforms. We're going to show you how to be able to use them. We're going to show you some examples, not only some of my own examples of how I made money with print on demand, but also how several of my students have made money with print on demand. I'm also going to show you kind of a little bit of the evolution of how you can start with print on demand, and then as you get a little bit better, you can basically grow and scale into having your full blown e commerce business, having a store online that people come to and buy stuff. Anywhere in the world, you literally can make money even while you're sleeping or make money even while you know, you're just traveling with friends. That's one of the beauties of internet marketing. So let's start with a high level overview of what is print on demand. Okay, so first things first, print on demand is everywhere. Okay, the concept is simple. See this logo on my shirt or this logo on my hat? What happens is that there are websites that you can go to that are called platforms. You can take this logo and you can go to this website and you can upload it. And then you can choose, I want this logo to be on a hat, I want this logo to be on a shirt, I want this logo to be on a coffee mug, or I want this logo to be on a, on a container. And they will literally, what they will do is that they, they will have inventory, they will put your logo onto a container just like this. And then they'll make it available. You can have it on phone cases. Okay, phone cases are very popular. Um, how many people here, let me see in, in, the, in the room here, how many people here have ever been to a a mall and you've seen a kiosk that has custom phone cases. Raise your hands if you've ever seen that. Okay, pretty much everybody, right? That is an example of print on demand. You can come up with a logo that can go on a phone case and there's companies right now online that all you have to do is upload the logo, they will uh, fulfill it. They will have the phone cases, they will print that logo onto the phone cases, they will build you a sales page for you. So all you do is you upload the logo and say I want it on a phone case, and then they will present you with a beautiful sales page. Minutes later, in just a couple of minutes, a beautiful sales page, and they'll say, it's yours. Now you have the sales page. All you have to do is drive visitors there. Every time somebody buys that custom phone case, you get a profit. And then they're gonna have their base cost. They're gonna say, okay, we want like 10 bucks, the first 10 bucks that comes in. You mark it up as high as you want, and you make all the profit. That's how it works. So I upload a logo to this, and it, they put it on this phone case. They build a beautiful, page that shows it on the phone case. They'll even have different colors, red, blue, black, whatever it is. And then all I do is I drive visitors there. If the company wants $10 as a base for that, and I charge 15, then I'm making $5 profit per phone case. Maybe I charge $19.95 for a custom phone case and I'm making $10, right, profit. Now that I'm making $10 profit, here's where it starts to get fun. Where do you find your visitors? Well, if I'm making $10 profit per phone case, then I can maybe spend $5 of that advertising on Facebook or paying some sort of paid traffic. So now, if it takes me $5 to acquire a customer that buys this phone case, then I'm out five, but I've made $10 in profit. I've doubled my money. I've spent five to make 10. And if the audience is big and there's a lot of buyers in there, then I can spend 50 to make 100. I can spend 500 to make 1,000. I can spend 5,000 to make 10,000, right? So I can, what, what is that then? I get the spread. So literally right there, when you figure it out and you scale it up, that could be an additional $5,000 a month in revenue from a phone case. Now, if it were that easy, we'd all be rich. So it's not that easy. Uh, let me break down where the complication comes. The complication comes is that people are jaded by advertising. Every single person here has seen a, um, a kiosk in the mall with a, with a custom case on it, okay? So, some of us have bought, just, just curious, has anybody bought from a kiosk in a mall, has anybody ever bought a custom cell phone case? Raise your hands if you have. Has anybody ever bought one from them? One, two, I have, I bought one, I bought one. San Francisco Giants, my sports team, I said, oh, that's a nice, sport, that's a nice case. But the case is flimsy and it broke like the same day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still bought it, right? So here's the thing. We're jaded, we're jaded. Even though you might think, oh, it's, you know, I do want a custom phone case, you just don't do it. So people are jaded by advertising. So here's the thing, what makes print on demand so successful is a couple of things, okay? And that's what we're gonna break down real quick in this overview. The first thing is, 
the design. The design that you upload is probably the most important piece of the entire thing. Now, you might think your design is great to you, but that doesn't mean anybody will want to buy it. And you might think, um, oh, well, of course, people want to buy like their favorite sports team and stuff like that. But you can't use sports logos. You can't use somebody else's logos. You can't use somebody else's trademark stuff. So it's all about creativity. When you look at this print on demand thing and you start to realize that you can be creative, you can unlock this whole world of ideas and it starts to get very exciting. And in a minute, we're going to dive into it. But it's all about creativity. So here's what I do. I come up with a design that is specific to an audience of people that I can easily reach on Facebook. Okay? Come up with a design that is specific to them. I do not come up with a design for me. I do not come up with a design and say, oh, I would like that. I would buy that. To me, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I want. I go, is there a good audience on Facebook that is passionate about this thing that I can market to? So I'm going to give you some examples. Take, um, let's take a topic that people are passionate about. So, so first things first, with so creativity, think. What are people passionate about? What are some things? What are some hobbies? What are some activities? What are some organizations? What are some, what are some uh, think anything people are passionate about. I'm going to give you an example. So my grandpa growing up, when I would go visit my family in Oklahoma, my grandpa was a hunter. He liked hunting. He had this entire wall at his house that had his uh, different guns that he had for hunting. And I was a California kid, so I knew nothing about hunting, really. I knew nothing about guns, but he was proud of that. Um, he also had dogs that were hunting dogs. He actually had three dogs that were hunting dogs. He was part of a hunting club that would actually go out and do quail hunting and stuff like that. So he, part of his life revolved around this hunting community to the point where he was so passionate about it, for days on end, he would go on hunting trips with all of his buddies in different states. Even while he had a family, he would take time off and go do that. He was so passionate about it. He would spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment related to hunting, gear, uh, you know, hunting tools, hunting uh, guns, the raising dogs. I mean, a large amount of money was spent on it. A large amount of time was spent on it. That's just an example. Me, I knew nothing about hunting. I just knew nothing. I had no desire at all to, to ever hunt. I've never been hunting. But... I recognized there was a passion there, okay? Another example. My cousin, uh, when we would go visit, he loved fishing. He just loved fishing. Now, I was not a fisherman either. So for me, I, I lacked the patience required to be a good fisherman, right? He would just go out there and say, man, isn't this just awesome? And I'm sitting there going, we're just sitting here. <laughs> you know, it's just quiet. Like, you know, and he's like, shh, be quiet. You don't want to, he was like, what? We can't even talk? <laughs> Like, so, so, but he loved it. He just loved casting the line. He could do fly fishing, all this kind of stuff, right? So the thing is, is that there was so much passion when he spoke about fishing. Like when he thought about if he has a free day, a free Sunday, what did he want to do? Fishing. It's the thing that dominated him, right? So I started to realize people were passionate. The, this is how you're going to be successful with things like print on demand. And as you uh, go through the evolution, this will work with e-commerce too. So dive in and be creative. Don't worry about you so much. Think, what are other people passionate about? When you're in your conversations and day-to-day -day life from now on, start thinking, what are people passionate about? What gets people excited? What are people talking about? Even their careers. People are very passionate about their careers. If somebody is a nurse, let's say, that means that they at one point decided, I'm going to be a nurse, and they probably invested hundreds of hours, if not thousands of hours, into a direction of education and learning everything to want to be a nurse. And then they went and got a job as a nurse. And then they probably hang out with other nurses that talk about things related to nursing. And it's, it's ingrained as part of their life. Their career can be part of their life to the point where it's all they think about. Now, these are just examples, but these are things that people are, are excited about. So if you have this passionate audience over here of people interested in fishing or people interested in hunting or people that are nurses, or whatever it might be, all you have to do is come up with a, a design on a t-shirt or a hat or a coffee mug or a cell phone case that speaks to them. When they see it, they go, I've got to have that. That is awesome. I've got to have that. And in a minute, I'm going to show you several of these designs. Now, when I started looking at my own hobbies, I thought if I could find something I'm passionate about that other people are passionate about, that's a win-win because it's something I know. I don't know about hunting. I don't know what 
and I'll show you, even if you don't know about it, I'll show you how to still make money from it. I've made money about things I know nothing about. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but I've made tens of thousands of dollars on these designs. I don't even know anything about that niche. But I said, what about some things I know about? Okay, I know about golf. I like golfing, and I remember, I couldn't golf for the life of me. And I went to my friend's um, baby shower, and the guys all went out golfing. And I was so horrible that we all bought a pack of 12 balls, and by the fourth hole, I lost all my balls. Okay, and, and then we, I just started drinking. And then I thought, hey, golfing's not that bad. You know, you can just drink and drive a golf cart. Like, I get why people golf now. Um, and I didn't have any balls left because, the, and, I, and I definitely dinged like four or five houses because I didn't just lose balls. I hit them with like such a big uppercut that the, it would just like fly into somebody's house, okay? Um, so I sucked. But something about that experience made me want to learn how because I was frustrated that I didn't know how to golf. So then what happened is the passion kicked in. I started going to the driving range. I started going on YouTube and watching videos. Sure enough, I buckled down and bought some equipment. And I even bought those little like golf aids and stuff like that to help you. And then I went and bought, oh, I got to I'll putt better if I have a more expensive putter. And I went and bought a $100 putter, you know, and I'm just getting started this thing. So then I'm just buying this equipment, doing all of this. And suddenly I got the golf bug. The passion kicked in. Now, every day I was thinking about golf. I mean, it's almost like I didn't have golf in my life and then golf was in my life and golf was like saturating my mind with my thoughts. The passion was extreme. At that point, anybody could have sold me anything related to golf if I believed it would have helped trim some points off my score. Like anything. If somebody knew where I was at, they go, you know, Chris, you were on the verge of being able to break 90 and be able to shoot in the 80s. And if you just had this, if you just had a few key tips, you could easily get there. You know, and here they are for sale. I would have, I would have bought them in a heartbeat because it's frustrating going out there and hitting balls out of bounds, and it feels great when you get a birdie. It's, it will bring you back out to the golf course again. It'll make you want to be there. That's when I started realizing, wow, there's things people are passionate about. Take bowling, you know? You go uh, to a bowling alley, and you go try to bowl, and they go, oh, no, it's league bowling. There's all these people, all the lanes are taken. And you see these people that have their own gloves they have their own balls they're wiping their balls just perfectly they've got their uniforms there it's there's a passion there and they're there in the afternoon that what they and then they that feeling of that crisp strike when the when the ball hits the pins just right and they explode and you finally learn how to curve the ball and you finally learn how to do all of this that's the key the key is like literally being able to figure out how to be able to capitalize on that passion how to be able to realize there's people out there that have things they're passionate about so we started off with print on demand, and I quickly took it to passion. Why did I do that? Because that's really the art here. The print on demand is the technical term, but you know what it really is? You're cashing in on their passions. Cash in on their passion. So in a minute, I'm gonna actually show you several examples of this in several different niches. I'm giving you examples. Before I do, let's bring a full idea to this. Print on demand is this simple. Okay? What you do is you, you, you find a passionate audience, you come up with a design that when they see it, they go, I've got to have that. That design speaks to me. So if the, uh, the audience is nurses, you come up with a design for nurses. If the audience is bowlers, you come up with a design for bowling. If it's fishers, people like fishing, you come up with a design about fishing. Then what you do is you put it on the page. You have The design has to be good. It can't just be a crappy little design. It's got to be good. They have to be able to want to wear it on a t-shirt or a hat or a mug or whatever. And when you've nailed this, you spend a little bit of money, maybe $100. If you're making a profit, you spend a little bit more money. And what will happen is you'll start scaling up. Because you'll spend $100, you'll make $200. Now you have $100 in profit. So now you have $200 to reinvest. Spend $200, you make $400. Spend $400, you make $800. $800, make $1,600. Now you're really in the game. And here's the key. Don't take that money and just try to live off of it. Take that money and try to master this skill. When you master print on demand, you can literally start printing money on demand. And that's what I want to show you. So with that being said, what I want to do is I want to jump into my computer and I want to show you a couple of platforms that you can actually use to begin uh, diving into print on demand. And um, I'm not going to show you all of them right now. In this section, you'll see lots of them. But what I'll do is I will jump in and I will start with um, a service called Teespring. It's the one that I started with initially. So let's just go to teespring.com. Okay, so here's teespring.com. And uh, hopefully we're seeing my computer screen. Okay, so you guys can see it up here. Okay, so teespring.com. Now, 
Here is a website that, that uh, is one of many. This is a website that you can actually um, sign up for for free. Okay, this won't cost you money. You can sign up for free. And what this does is it basically gives you the ability to be able to upload your designs. They build your sales pages for you. And then after they build your sales pages, they give you your page. All you have to do is drive traffic to it. Teespring is going to cut you the check. So Teespring is going to make the sale, collect the money, and then they're going to cut you the check. So let's kind of go through this. Let's look at this. First, we're going to look at some example uh, different types of shirts. We're going to go through a bunch of different niches real quick. We're going to look at them. Uh, and then in the classroom here, live, we'll actually be able to take some questions and stuff. So when you go to Teespring, the first thing I would do is I, I would go down to these categories. M because these, they've already figured out things that people are passionate about. Music, food, dancing, professions, doctors, teachers, military, view all jobs. And then as you keep going, look, hobbies, sports, pets. Would you guys agree that somebody who owns a dog is passionate about dogs? Oh, yeah. Right? That is an example of a niche that people are passionate about and if you can make sure. So what you do is you go in each one of these sections. You notice here on the bottom, browse popular categories. There's all kinds of stuff here, right? So let's just go randomly into, uh, into one of these sections. Let's go to view all jobs. And then you can go in here and you can actually go through on your own and you can go through here, okay? But view all jobs. You'll notice here there's these job categories, okay? So you can kind of go into these. Let's just go to military as an example. Even if you're not in the military, um, the military is, again, something that people are passionate about. Because think about it. People go and they move away from their family, they move away from their friends, and they invest potentially years and years and years of time into the military. And they have, they're surrounded by, by a culture and a community that's very, very military-based. And their friends are all in the military. And the one common thing they all have together is the military. And the military in itself is something they also teach you to get very passionate about. They want very loyal, passionate people in there. So, um, and just curious here, was anybody in this room, in this live audience, was anybody in this room ever in the military at any point in their life? One, two, three, four, a few of you. So um, thank you for, being, for doing that for service as well. That's an example. I'm sure you guys would agree that that's, there's a camaraderie they develop. So people are very, very passionate about it. So here we're going to look at some examples of how people like you and I are uploading logos to this site, targeting people in the military with their advertising, trying to come up with designs that they really like. So let's just take a look at them. Okay, we're going to take a look at this first one right here. Never underestimate grandpa. Now, I'm not, when I'm going to show you these examples, I'm not, a couple things. Number one, these are just random examples featured on the website. These are not my students. I'm not saying you should do the examples like this. And I'm definitely not saying to copy these people. I don't, I don't like copying. I think you can get creative and come up with your own. What we're going to do is we're going to use each one of these as a quick little case study to explain print on demand and how it works. So what do we have here? Let's, let's look at the elements. First, let's look at the t-shirt design. Never underestimate the tenacious power of a grandpa who is also a US veteran. So let's look at, um, first let's look at the design, then let's look at the targeting. And if you guys are taking notes, uh, write design plus targeting. Those are the two key things, design plus targeting. So let's look at the design. First of all, you'll notice it's really just uh, uh, two colors, right? Or red, it's a black shirt, so it comes across as three colors. But it's really just a, like, a, like a gray and a red, OK? Um, so keep that in mind. The more colors that you have on your shirts and designs, the more expensive the print's going to be. So you really want to keep your designs to one or two colors so there's more profit in them. So that's the first little tip. Be very, very basic, one, two colors. OK, now let's look at what, what I call design elements. So here's the elements that make up this shirt. Uh, number one, I see, a, I see a USA flag in there. So one of the elements is a flag. Now, they're targeting, uh, it's, they're not necessarily targeting military. On this one, it's a little bit more specific. They're targeting veterans, people who had served in the military throughout. They are US veterans. Um, so they're targeting people that are United States and people that are veterans. Facebook will give you this kind of data. Facebook will let you know who are veterans that have served. So you have an automatic audience. So the USA flag is the symbol for, uh, you know, that's the symbol that's synonymous with that passion. So if you, if you know nothing about the military, know nothing about veterans, you might not understand the correlation of some of these items. So it, sometimes it's good to choose a niche that you know about a little bit better. But some of these are pretty basic. Now, 
There's also like a necklace in there, what looks like a necklace. These are dog tags. These are like a military ID tag. So when people are in the military, they get these little, these little tags. Right? I'm not a military guy. These are just but very basically speaking. They get these little tags. A lot of them wear them. So you see somebody that's ex-military, a lot of times they'll have like a little chain with these little dog tags on, these little ID tags. To them, that's like re they're remembering their service. It's kind of like it's, it's something more sacred to them. So they've utilized a flag and they've utilized a very soft imagery of that. Okay, really nice. Now, they're really, they're, they're also saying that this person is proud to be a US veteran. So they're capitalizing on the passion of sometimes veterans are beaten down. Sometimes veterans are not looked at in high esteem. Okay, this has happened before a lot, right? So people that are veterans are a lot of times proud to be a veteran. They serve the country, they're proud. So this is basically a statement of pride, okay? Saying, here's the American flag, here's my ID tags, I'm a US veteran and I'm proud of that, okay? So it allows somebody to share their passion proudly. Um, never underestimate the tenacious power, okay? So they're using the word tenacious, they're using words like that or just kind of like these powerful words to draw it out. And really what they're doing is they're just bringing kind of like a storyline to this shirt. Never underestimate the power. That could be anything. That's just a storyline. They're basically creating a shirt that kind of reads almost like a, almost like a quote or, or a, a, a short little um, statement or sentence. That works really well. People like wearing shirts that have you know, statements and sentences on them. Um, you'll notice that the tenacious power is another thing to make them feel proud. Okay? But then there's another key thing here. There's a ribbon design, and on the ribbon design it says grandpa. Now that's where it's very, very different. They're not only targeting veterans. But they're getting very specific. They're targeting veterans who are men, because grandpa is a male term, and they're targeting veterans who are men, who are United States, okay, so US veterans, men who are grandparents, okay? So there's at least four things happening here. So when they're doing their targeting, when they're saying, who is an ideal person for the shirt? They're identifying their target market. They're saying, okay, men, and also I, I could say a fifth thing, which is gonna be age, grandparents are going to be, if you just do some basic math, grandparents are going to be a, at least a basic age, right? If, even if they had their first child when they were 20 years old, and then, their first, then their child had their first child when they, were, when they were 20 years old, they could be a grandpa at age 40. But really, that's kind of going to be on the early cusp. A lot of times, 50s, 60s, stuff like that. So grandpa, they're targeting, so look, they're targeting men in the United States who are veterans, who are grandparents, who are probably ages 40 and above. There's no point in targeting less than that. So there's your targeting points. That is how you make money with print on demand. You understand to come up with a good design. Now, let's, do, let's talk design and targeting. So we talked about the elements of the design. We talked about the colors, the elements, the storyline. But we'll, let's also talk about the quality of the design. The quality of the design is important. Generally speaking, for those of you that are live watching right now, would you agree this design is, is decently laid out, is pretty good structure, looks pretty good, right? It's professional enough, you might see something like this in a store, right? But it's not like so intricate, it's impossible to do. Would you, how crazy would it sound if I told you that I have a guy that personally designs stuff like this for me for $5 a design? $5 a design. That's why we have an entire module on outsourcing. So I've got a guy that designs these for $5 a design for outsourcing. When I really want to really des a design that pops, or I really think that it's a seller, I'll, I'll invest as much as $20 in a design. I rarely, only once I invested $100 in a design, and that design didn't really um, sell much more than the $20, $25 design, so I, I only did that once and stopped doing it. I literally, for designs like what you're seeing, all you have to do is have the idea, have some other designs to model after, and you can go to an outsourcer. We have an entire section in the impact series on outsourcers to teach this. You could take a design, you can change around the elements, you could take in a few other elements you've seen, and then you can basically give like a new sentence, a new tag, new everything, give it to a designer and say, design me something different but similar. And the designer will design you something like this. Here's where I get some of my design ideas. I go to stores in the mall, Okay, I've got a couple of children, right? A three-year-old and a five-year-old boy. I'll take them to the mall, hang out, and stuff like that. Every single time I pass a t-shirt shop, I always just swing right through, and I look at the designs, because I'm sitting there, and I go like, what are the designs? And I always think, ooh, what creative idea do I have that I could change that design to basically fit a niche? Like, 
I'll go and I'll look at a design and I'll say, what if I swap the words around? Like for example, US veteran. Look at the elements, you guys. Look really quick at these elements here. What if instead of US veteran, what if it's done something like who is a nurse, right? Or who is a fireman? And what if instead of a flag, maybe it was a fire truck or something symbolic to a fireman, right? Or what if instead of a veteran, it was a bowling shirt? And instead of a flag, it was lanes with pins. You see what I'm saying? You look, when you look at a shirt, don't look at it as a design. Look at it as there's various design elements in there. There's words, there's fonts, there's ribbons and elements there. There's a flag, there's these tags in there. There's more fonts. The fonts kind of match the theme. These are very militaristic power fonts. There's colors. Um, and there's, there's, there's a phrase. You start looking at it like that and you start realizing like, wow, I could swap this out. So next time you're in a store, be thinking, how could I swap this out? And that's where I've come up with some of my great ideas. And you might be looking at something that's like a t-shirt that's for like fans of a TV show, like fans of the Walking Dead TV series. You might be looking at that and going, okay, fans of the Walking Dead, there's a shirt for fans of the Walking Dead, but then suddenly you realize, well, there's fans of everything. There's fans of every TV show, every t movie, every topic, every, every, I wonder if I could just swap things out. Instead of zombies with the Walking Dead zombies, instead of zombies, I could replace it with this. Instead of the word Walking Dead, I could replace it with this, but keep the same elements. So you know what you do? You pull out your phone, you take a picture of it, okay? And then what you do is you basically kind of think about what you want. You take a picture, you kind of mark it up a little bit, and then you basically uh, give it to your designer, who you can design for as little as five to $25, have them whip out a shirt, and then you go, Upload it and you test it on these sites. It may not sell. You never know, but when they start selling, boy, they start selling. Um, you'll also notice this is the sales page. So, Never Underestimate Grandpa is a fun little, a fun little uh, title. Notice they also have some other things here, okay? Um, safe and secure checkout with credit card or PayPal. They're writing some words on here. So along with the design, you also are putting in a description on this page. You'll notice that they put safe and secure checkout. They want customers to feel like, okay, they're seeing this probably on Facebook. They want customers to feel comfortable with it. Look at this, Papa version, Papa version, Grandma version, Mama version. Are you guys starting to see how this person understands that that word grandpa right there could be swapped out very easily? So let's go check it out. Let's go see what happens when we click on these. And look at this. This starts to get you, this starts to uh, really show you the power. When you have one shirt that's selling well, this grandpa one, look at this. Same shirt, what did they change? Papa. Papa would be, um, depending on where you are in, in the world, the country, whatever, here in the US, there's some people that will call their grandpa or maybe even, maybe even their father, I don't know how, to the extent of it, but they call them Papa. It's a common thing. In fact, um, uh, that was my grandpa's nickname in Oklahoma. So it was very common, called Papa. Um, and then they, we ended up calling him Pampa. Mamma and Pampa was my grandma and grandma. Your grandma and grandpa. So this, this is common, they do this. And then here's one, Mama. Never underestimate. And look, they ch the shirt's a little more blue, just a little different. Never underestimate the tenacious power of a mama who's also a U.S. veteran. They got the mama shirt, they got the grandma, and they got the Papa. Okay? So... These are called templating out your design. So you, you find a knit, you find a passionate audience, you come up with a logo, you come up with an idea for a design that looks good, you pay maybe $25, you upload it, and now and they put together a sales page, and then you can put some text on there. You can see safe and secure checkout with credit card or PayPal. Now, you can also, you can advertise directly to this individual page, or sites like Teespring will also give you your own storefront. So you can actually build like your own storefront that has all yours. So let's look at this person's storefront. They've created a store, and by the way, this, just to show you that this is like, you could do this with any term, phrase, anything. This is not a saturated market. Every single day I come up with like endless ideas for t-shirts. I even thought one day like, I'm just gonna brainstorm a list of like a thousand ideas and just give them away because they're endless ideas for this. This is a real legitimate thing. This person has created a never underestimate store, okay? So what they have is they have a graphic here showing lots of their different designs, okay? And just like that, Look at all the different stuff. Never under, I say grandma, grandpa, papa, nana, nana, granddad, grandma, pampa, mama. And look at this, they, they got their little store. 
It's all the same design, just swapped out. So you can do this. You can create a store that has your designs, and then you can have all your designs loaded up, and it could be all themed around something. You can advertise directly to your store, or you can adver advertise directly to the individual product. So let's look at a couple other elements. Let's look at the element of um, a couple other things. They've got two more things I want to talk about, or really a few, few more things. One is I want to talk about uh, pricing. So they have chosen the price of $24.99. Now, when you're dealing with retail pricing, you generally never want to use round numbers. You generally don't want to say 25. Now, you can experiment, but it's generally better instead of saying 25 to say 24.99 because the way the human mind works with sales psychology is you see the number 24. In fact, um, there was a case study done on this where people bought an item, okay, and it was something like blank. Dot 99. Let's just say 24.99 because I don't know the exact price. But they did a whole study on this, a video on YouTube. You can watch real, one of like hidden, not hidden camera, but like interview type things. And people all bought this item. And then it said another person would come up and would ask them about it. Oh, that's really awesome. Where did you buy it? Da da da. And they would say, really, how much did it cost? And the person would always say this price, 24.99. But it didn't cost 24.99. With tax and stuff like that, they paid over $25 for it. But the price that they told almost, almost all the entire time was $24.99. So they saw an item in a store, they saw $24.99 and thought, okay, that's reasonable, I'll buy it. When they actually went to checkout, it was more like $26.32 or something like that. But they never saw that price. Even though that's what they paid, they never saw it. They have the receipt in their pocket that has the actual real price. How much is this? It's $26.32. Nope. You know how much they said? $24.99. Sales psychology. So when you're doing pricing t-shirts, you, you, the most common would be like $24.99, $29.95, stuff like that. Okay? That's a little thing. So pricing. Pricing is important. On a shirt like this, um, I, I, I can't tell you the exact cost of this, but on a shirt like this, I could tell you the rough cost is probably around $10 to this person. So when they charge $24.99, they're probably making, I don't know, $12, $15, bucks, something like that in profit. So let's just say 15 for the, sake of, for the sake of keeping it simple. Every time they sell a shirt, they're making roughly $15 in profit. That's powerful. That means that they have an advertising budget of up to $15 to spend to try to get somebody to buy the shirt. So they spend $15. If they don't make a sale, then either the design wasn't good or the targeting wasn't good. That's why I said design and targeting. So they try again, spend another $15, try to make a sale. If they spend $15 and they make a sale, they've broken even. If they spend $15 and they make a few sales, now they're starting to make some really good profit. So that's kind of how this thing goes. Um, you'll also notice colors. Not only do you choose price, you're going to choose different types of shirts. They have a hoodie. So let's look at this. This print-on-demand shirt automatically shows the design on the back of a hoodie here. And this hoodie is a Gildan 8-ounce heavy blend hoodie. They're selling it for $39.99. So this hoodie probably has over $20 profit on it. Okay, pretty cool. Um, and then you look at these colors, you can see they got different colors. So they got different styles. So they kind of go and look, they'll kind of go through the colors and see what they look. So you, when you're designing your shirt, you can do all of this. You can upload your design, you can choose what type. Um, and look at this, it got a little mug. Check that out. They got this little mug right here. They put the same design right there on a coffee mug. And they're selling that coffee mug for 15 bucks, $14.99. So this gives you an example. You're uploading an image, you're putting it on all this apparel, and then when you all get it set and done, they duplicated the image, and instead of grandpa, it's grandma, and then they put the whole other, a whole other line of apparel. All they did was they paid for, in, in, in a simple term, I don't know what they did, but an example is what I would do with this, I might pay $25, $20, $25 to get the design done once, and then probably just a couple dollars for the variations. Or I might, because all they're really doing is change the word grandpa, that person would probably throw it in for free. $25, they design it, and then I say, can you give me a few versions where it says grandma, grandma, mamma, pampa, stuff like that. And they'll probably just throw that in for free. I'm probably out about $25 in overhead at this point. I take that design, and I upload it to multiple different things, and I build my little storefront just like this. That's what I do. That's the power of this. And then people can buy it right here. People can buy it now. Now, another thing you'll notice is um, there's a countdown timer. Okay? This is interesting. The reason that these sell very well is because there's a couple other elements, and I want you to take notes on this. Remember I told you design and targeting? There's a couple other elements that are going to be effective for you to be able to sell things online, especially print on demand. The first two I told you were design plus targeting. The next two, urgency 
plus scarcity. Okay? What happens is um, if this is just a regular store with a regular product there, somebody can come back at any time. By putting a countdown timer on it right there, this creates urgency. They have to purchase it before the, this is only available until Friday. They have to purchase it before Friday. So if they were thinking, oh, this is really cool, they might, buy it, they might come back later. But right now, you got them on the page, they're looking at it. By having a countdown timer on there, it's automatically going to give them a deadline that they've got to purchase this by. And it works really well. This is not something you would see in a store. When you walk into a store in the mall, you don't see a design like this. You don't see a coffee mug that says, never underestimate the, power, the tenacious power of a grandpa who is also a US veteran. You don't see that. So they, you can say, not available in stores. Limited edition. These, you can start doing words of scarcity. Your text can be scarcity. Limited edition, limited supply. There's only a few more left. This is a limited test run. You know, you can start using words like that. And then the urgency is it's only available until Friday. Only available while supplies last. What you have is you now have a nice design with good quality targeting, with urgency and scarcity, all working in harmony together. That is the key to being able to sell. The beautiful thing is these platforms like Teespring have it all built in for you. So you don't have to learn how to code a countdown timer. When you set this up, you just literally just, um, you literally, you literally just set how long you want the countdown timer to be, seven days, 20 days, stuff like that. The way that this works on these social platforms, the way it works is this. When you set up a product for sale, Teespring's gonna say, how many do you anticipate you're gonna sell in how long? So you'll choose, I anticipate I'm gonna sell 100 in one week. So what they'll do is they'll put a seven day countdown timer and then they'll say, we need to sell 100 of these in order for this to print. You've all heard of these sites like um, Kickstarter. You guys heard of Kickstarter? Like these crowdfunding type sites, stuff like that? Okay, it's very, very similar. The model with Kickstarter is, I have an idea. In order for me to make, and I have an idea for this really cool uh, thermos that keeps my tea hot for you know, 10 days. It's just this really cool idea. It's 10 days. Imagine that like, you could just have these set up um, and it keeps it hot in the refrigerator. You can have 10 of these in the refrigerator, hot tea ready to go on demand, 10 days even. I just walk in, grab it right out of the fridge and it's hot and it's good to go and it's fresh. Okay, that's a cool idea. So I got this idea for this thermos, but in order for me to actually make these, take it from idea to make them, I need $100,000 to make this reality. So I go on Kickstarter and say, hey, do you want to pre-buy these ideas? If I get um, $100,000, then I'm actually going to make these. And then when I make them, then you can have them. You're going to go and give me some money, like 50 bucks or whatever, and you're not going to get this for like three months because I need to collect all the money, then I need to make it, and then I need to give it to you. That's how Kickstarter works. It's, it's like crowdfunding, right? It's like saying, I have this idea. If everybody chips in 50 bucks, I'll have enough money to make it, and then you'll get one before everybody else. Cool idea. That's how sites like Teespring work. What they're saying is, it's going to basically say, hey, we need 100 of these to sell in order to print this. What happens is, as soon as 100 of them sell, the campaign tips. Okay? And you can tip it with much less than 100, but the campaign tips, the shirts all print, and when the seven days is up, Teespring takes all those orders, and then they print all those shirts on demand, and they send them to the customers on your behalf. You don't do anything. No inventory, no shipping, no refunds, no nothing. No money, no transactions, no nothing. They handle all of it for you. All you do is upload the design and drive traffic to the site for people to buy the stuff. It all gets handled for you. When the seven days is up, they ship it all out, and then based on what your profit is, Teespring cuts you a check. Whatever the, pro whatever the difference is, Teespring gives you the difference, the, the check right there. Go straight to your PayPal, stuff like that. One, one second, we'll do questions. They cut, they, cut, they cut you the profit. So what happens is, you, the lower of an amount you choose, 10 shirts, you're going to make less profit because it's going to cost Teespring more to print and do 10 shirts. If you sell 500 shirts or 1,000 shirts, you're going to get a nice profit on each shirt. The more shirts you sell in that week, the more profit you get. Now, why wouldn't you just stretch it out even three weeks then to make more profit? Because you might not want to wait for the campaign to end three weeks to get paid a week later. That could be a month before you get paid. You're going to want to choose a date that's soon, so you get paid soon, but gives you a long enough time frame to sell a bunch of shirts. So the goal is, usually, to set about a one week to two week timer and to try to sell in the hundreds of shirts on that campaign. That's the sweet spot to make money. And I'll show you, we'll set up an actual campaign right now and I'll show you, but I want to take questions. I saw a couple questions here live. Let's take the first question. Okay, um, 
would you recommend maybe starting small and doing a test to see if it sells and then scale up? So what would be the smallest order you'd want to do? Okay, so the question is, would I recommend starting small before scaling up and what, what amount would be the smallest order? So first of all, yes. Always, always start small. Um, there was one time where I thought that I had a home run hitting design, so I just went big right off the bat. And I literally spent like $4,000 in advertising because I knew it was a winner. And it just flopped hard. I was like, wow. Well, I guess, you know, you never know. You never know. Uh, always test. Always test and scale. Um, what amount would I start with for testing? Well, we're all in a different financial place and different experience. For someone like me, I feel a little bit more confident because I've had some winners. I've had shirts that have gone on to do $30,000 in profit while others have gone on a flop. So I've seen this diverse amount. So I'll kind of, I'll always test probably at least 100, 100 bucks on a, on a design. To me, $100 is something I can live without. You know, it's a nice dinner out, whatever, on the night or whatever. I can live without that, $100. Um, if, if I can't sell a single shirt off $100, that doesn't mean it won't work. It just means something's wrong and I got to figure out what's wrong design plus targeting, urgency plus scarcity, uh, am I matching the audience well? Um, maybe the design has been done, you know? Maybe a lot, what a lot of people do is they try to take shortcuts, they try to copy other people, they're like, oh, like I'm gonna just do this one right here. They try to copy, um, and that just doesn't work. A lot of times that this market has a lot, if you copy, somebody's already really tapped that so well, people have already been seeing it, they're a little bit blind to it, uh, it doesn't really work well. And they think, oh, I suck at this. No, you just gotta get like, you just gotta test. Also, what I do is I don't just try to test one design. When I started, I did about 10 designs and out of those 10 <coughs> designs, two of them sold, eight of them lost. So I'm losing money on eight and two of them are selling. Let's, um, let's come over here to this screen. I wanna draw, I wanna draw that example um, on this screen. I've actually never even used this. So we'll try. What I wanna do is I wanna kinda show you the, the, what, what it looked like for me when I first um, started selling um, with these different campaigns. So let's just say that there's 10 campaigns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I've got 10 campaigns, okay? And of these 10 campaigns, um, and these each dash represents a campaign. What would happen is only two of them were profitable. And I could make those green, you know, if I wanted, I just didn't even think about that. But then all of these were losing money, okay? And this is important to understand, okay? Okay, so I've got, of these 10, eight of them are losing money, literally, just bleeding money, and two of them are making money. But this is where it really gets interesting on a very basic level. If something is losing money, do you continue running it? No. If something is gaining money, do you continue running it? That's the factor that people need to understand when it comes to paid advertising. So even though these are bleeding, what I do is, um, is I just stop the bleeding, okay? I put a barrier there. I go into my ads account and press pause, 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 okay? But I don't pause those two that are growing. So what happens is these just keep growing, 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 kind of to potentially infinite levels. Obviously, there's a point where, the, there's a point where you kind of reach your audience, you kind of kind of saturate the potential of that shirt and you gotta move on to a new design or something new. But they keep growing, 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 growing. So let's say that I did that, um, let's just say in a, in a simple stance, let's just say take $100 per shirt design as a, as, a, as a number that we're gonna use here. So these are eight that I spent $100 on and you could spend a lot less than that, okay? Which means that I am at a negative, eight, I'm at a negative $800, okay? I'm at minus $800. I basically, Spent $100 on each one of these, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, if I was doing 10 shirts, I'd probably spend, a I wouldn't just be like, oh, I'm gonna put $1,000 randomly into it. I'd probably spend a little bit less on each one, maybe $20 per one. But what I did here is, I'm down $800. I've lost $800. I'm out. And these two, on $100 each, um, so I spent $100, $100. Let's say right here, let's say that uh, symbolizes that I've made $200. So I'm, I'm, I'm plus $200 right there. So I'm minus 800 and I'm plus 200. So I've spent a thousand dollars. I made 200. So now I'm up to 1200, but I've lost 800. So now I'm down to 400. So I'm actually at, I spent a thousand, but now I'm only left with 400 left or sorry, 400. 
is all that I, uh, that's out, out of the thousand, it's just 400 is all that I have left. I made, spent a thousand, made 1200 minus 800. And I'm only, it's like, I'm just losing money. My, my thousand just turned into 400 sucks. I'm losing money. So what I've got to do is I got to say, okay, pause this and scale this. So now maybe this, this, like after a few more days, this is actually up to like a thousand more. Now I'm back up. Let's just say I'm, I'm now I'm back to even. I broke even. And then over here, now I'm at 2,000. And over here, now I'm at 5,000. And that's kind of like, for, for lack of a better illustration, that's kind of how it works, is that I, I, I use a shotgun approach instead of a rifle approach where I'm just going, this design has to be the winner, and then it doesn't win. I use a shotgun approach, right? The shotgun approach where the, the bullet kind of fragments into 10 different designs. I got 10 different ideas. Let's throw a little bit of money on them, see what works. Turns out eight of them weren't working. I don't really even care because I got two that were. So I'll come back to these later. I don't even care right now to figure it out. These two that are working, I'm going to like, not only am I going to let them continue to run, but I'm probably going to tweak the ads and figure out if I can make them even better. So what happens is this number starts rapidly growing. So you're able to cut your losses while rapidly growing your profit. And at a certain point, there's a tipping point. So if this were like a, a, this, if this were like a, a scale, what happens when you start your paid advertising, you're going on a dip like that. And then this is your break even point right there. So you go on, when it's, when it's paid advertising, got my 10 designs, I start and then I lose money and then I get over here and I break even. But then when it breaks even, remember I paused all the losers. So look at that. See this? And this little dip, this little valley is what uh, is frustrating, it's irritating, uh, it's real money out of your own pocket, so that sucks. Um, and maybe there's a situation where all 10 of them didn't, uh, didn't work, in which case you never see that, that trajectory. But when you get the trajectory, that trajectory is more than all these losses combined. And now you're in the profit. And once you get a taste for that, it's kind of like the golf bug or it's kind of like the fishing bug. And now you got the profit bug. Because now you're like, wait a minute, so I can just come up with a creative idea, play some Facebook ads, and I could literally print $5,000 in profit this week. And then you become that guy that contacted me. Uh, a, 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 one of my students contacted me and literally said, hey, man, I'm selling like a million a month. It's crazy. It's insane. But he didn't start that way. He started losing money like everybody else did. Frustrated, pulling out his hair, going, why is, this, why is it so easy for such and such? And I can't figure it out. That's print on demand. When you figure out print on demand, you spend a little bit of money. So, I mean, if there's 10 campaigns, maybe 20 bucks a piece, a couple hundred dollars just to test it out, I want to invest enough money. Like if a shirt's selling for 20 and I've only put in 20, I might not even have good data. I want to usually invest more money into a shirt or design than it's selling for. So if something's selling for $20, I'm going to try to put in more than $20 to make sure I got enough money to get a real test, real data. Okay, questions? Inside of Impact, will there be a tool available that you can take um, some of these ideas and run them through and make sure that they're not copyright protected or trademarked so that you're not having any legal infringements and get yourself in trouble? So yes and no. The question is, will, will there be a tool to help make sure that things aren't trademark protected? So first of all, no, we're, we, are, we can't legally um, identify for you what, what's trademark and what's not. Um, that's up for you to do, but we will have a, um, we'll have training in there to help identify. We'll teach people how to identify what's trademarked, what's copyrighted, stuff like that. There's some obvious things not to do. Obvious things to avoid would be sports logos. Um, obvious things, sports is gonna be the biggest one. Like I see a lot of people try to capitalize, right now it's football season. I see a lot of people trying to capitalize on football, especially college football. Great niche, right? So you, got to, you cannot use a sports logo in any way what, uh, whatsoever. Most of these print-on-demand um, companies will shut down your, your campaign before you even go too far with it because they don't want to get in trouble either. But you can, you can learn, what, what you want to do is you want to learn to, if you have to do that niche, if you're like, I'm going to do sports no matter what because I love it, learn to find words, keywords, um, nicknames, keywords, stuff like that that are, that are more fair use. Learn to find words that are a little, little bit more fun and play on those words. You know, So think, people that are this team fan, what are other things that they're always saying or always doing? Or what are, what are some commonalities? And get creative. What associations do they belong to? What things do they, do they love? You know, you want to think like that. Okay, we had more questions um, back here.
even though this is custom t-shirts or hoodies or whatever, do you ever run into shipping issues or returns? Okay, so even though this company is, they specialize in this stuff, is there ever shipping issues and returns? Yes, so one of the common, th no, so first of all, yes and no. This company, uh, these platforms that we have listed here in the Impact Series, these are platforms that have been vetted as good ones. There's going to be a lot. You might go, oh, what about this little ABC print company? Well, the, the, the more of an upstart they are, the more problematic they might have. I mean, a company like this has done whatever, hundreds of millions of dollars. So they've become, they've developed a process that's pretty good. What you're looking to do is you're looking to um, use a, a, a decent, large company that's made those mistakes and corrected. But there will be times, like for example, there's a picture right now on the screen of a, of a mug with a design on it. So you're like, man, that looks good. But then when it actually comes, like maybe the, the design got as like a little square got printed on it. You know, it kind of looks bad. Stuff like that will happen. There's human error involved and all this kind of stuff. So then there will be refunds. Um, usually, uh, the, the cool thing is these services are in, have incredible customer support. So what you do is when you're running Facebook ads, you're going to have a lot of comments when a couple weeks after, you know, a week after your campaign closed, you're going to have a lot of comments from people that are like, they, they bought the shirt or whatever, and they're talking about it, okay? Especially when you have a successful one. And they're talking about it, and people are either going to be in there complaining about it or raving about it. And so you can kind of spearhead that. When people are complaining about it, you can respond back to them really quickly and be like, hey, no problem whatsoever. We'd love to take care of that for you. It happens. You know, here's our support. And you can literally give this company support. So here's our support. Contact them. Uh, make sure they'll, they'll send you out another one. Perfect. They, they'll, they'll own that one. It happens. So as long as you're on top of it, you can spin that a little bit. But it's their responsibility to make sure. It's your responsibility to line the picture up the way you want it on the mug. Um, so you have to give you lines you have to stay in, inside of. It's your responsibility to do that. Once you have it there, it's their responsibility to make sure that the customer is satisfied with the end product and end result. Um, so as long as you use a good, reputable provider like Teespring or uh, there's several more featured here in the Impact Series, you should be fine. Good? Okay, let's, um, let's go on and mess around with the design. Okay, while, while this, while, before we go into design, let me, let, me, let me go back to niches really quick. Let me go really quickly, let me go back to um, these categories of design. So back on my computer screen here, let's go to these categories of design. And uh, I, I really quickly jumped into military and I didn't give you kind of a broad reach. So before we go into specific, let's go into a broad, let's go into like more categories really quick. So like look at all these categories, sports, pets, entertainment, names, politics, occasions, events, jobs, belief, awareness. Um, oh, this picture of politics. It almost looks like, like Donald Trump's hair or something like that. <laughs> Let's go to pets. Okay, um, so this time we're, we're, we'll, we'll maybe deep dive on a couple, but let's just, let's just look at, let's leave up the screen like this and let's look at a couple. Okay, let's look at this first one. The pink shirt. Drink wine and pet my dog. So the, the shirt says, I just want to drink wine and pet my dog. Okay, Pretty simple, right? One color. Now the shirt is a color, but look, the design is one color. It's essentially, I could probably zoom in a little bit. Essentially, it's white. It's just white. Do you notice that? Now, there's a phrase, I just want to drink wine and pet my dog. Now, who knows if that phrase is going to be good or not, but it's just there. And you'll notice, there, what are the elements of this? The elements are um, a phrase and a, a wine glass and a dog. So the wine symbolizing wine, dog symbolizing dog. A silhouette, so going back to trademark and copyright, they're, they're not using like somebody's real dog. These are very available, basic graphic design silhouettes. So when you go to a designer to design you something, in fact, this is actually so simple, some of you in this room could probably design this yourself. This is not like grade A, hardcore graphic design. It's pretty simple. It's like clip art type design. But it works, it's crazy. So we'll just kind of pull that one open um, and we'll look at it. So I just want to drink wine and pet my dog. So let's look at this. 4,004 sold. It's available until Friday, so they still have a countdown timer. How many people, before I showed you that in this room, how many people would have thought that this little design sold 4,000? This little clip art design, a couple of you? 4,000. Here's why. Because remember I said design and targeting? Well, when you're targeting somebody who's passionate, this is what's called an intersecting audience. Okay? With Facebook, when you go into the impact series, when you go into the Facebook 
advertising section, you're going to learn more about Facebook ads. You're going to learn about something called intersecting audiences. And intersecting audiences is where you take two different audiences completely and you intersect them. Okay? The two different audiences um, are pet owners, dog owners, and wine drinkers. Two totally different things. But would you, you would all agree, right, that some people who drink wine also happen to have a dog. Okay? That's where the intersection is. People who like this topic and this topic, you're going to target the people who intersect. So Facebook gives, you, um, Facebook gives you the ability to be able to choose these intersecting audiences. Now, not only that, you'll notice one other element. So this shirt is targeting people who drink wine and people who have a dog. What is the other asp who, who else is this shirt targeting? Females, Females women. Um, as evidenced by two things, color and shirt design, or the shirt type of shirt, right? It's a women's shirt, and the color is, is a pink. Now, even, but even if you go, look, well, here, I just want to drink wine and pet my dog. There's a, there's a hoodie, so this could be neutral, uh, gender neutral right here. But generally speaking, the colors that they're choosing, they're choosing the women's premium tea, then they're choosing the women's relaxed tea. So here you go, $24.95. It's a single, a single color design, again, probably around $15 in profit. We'll, we'll do something similar right now. I just want to drink wine and pet my dog. Okay, pretty simple. So I'm just kind of showing you, um, and again, like, look at this, urgency and scarcity. What do we got here? Limited time only, not available in stores. Did we just discuss that? And here we are finding somebody using the same stuff. Click by, look, guaranteed safe checkout. Okay, so urgency, sca uh, scarcity, you're, you're giving people trust. And you scroll down here, now this is social proof. Like when you're on a Kickstarter campaign, and you see that somebody has, um, has a great idea, but they only have funded $100, you're like, oh, really? Do I want to be the first person to do this? But if you see that they've got, they funded $40,000 and there's only $10,000 $10, more to go than it makes it, you're much more likely to give your money. As more shirts are sold, the social proof makes it easier to sell more shirts. So that's one of the benefits of this, is that it'll help you get more social proof. Um, OK, so let's go down to these related shirts. And let's, let's look at some of these related wine shirts. Okay, and let's look at more of these intersecting audiences. So here's a women's uh, tank top. Weights and wine, because punching people is frowned upon. Okay, it's a funny statement, right? That basically says, um, and this is like playing off this. There's a popular trend that was emerging in the graphic world about. Um, punching people. It was just a funny little thing. So it, you might not understand that, but it was actually pretty popular for a while. But let's just look at the weights and wine. Same thing. Gra you've got to look at the design elements. Font. The font almost makes the design. Weights and wine itself is like a cool font. But then you have elements of a couple little basic clip art style weights and a glass of wine. Okay, and now you've got the two colors. You've got the white and you've got the burgundy for the color of the wine. So this is targeting um, women, again, who are into fitness and working out and who are into drinking wine. Intersecting audience. These intersecting audiences are powerful because if, if you were a woman who was interested in working out and drinking wine, those are two of your passions, and you saw this in the Facebook newsfeed, you would feel like it's speaking to you. This is not available in stores. You can't go to a store and find this. So you'd feel like, wow, Facebook knows that I like this, and that's what's going to cause that urgency for people to buy. Okay, how about this one? Um, just another wine drinker with a camping problem. Okay? This is called a template t-shirt. Um, there's, again, elements. There's a tent, some trees. It looks like, uh, I can't tell what the other ones is, maybe a little fire or something like that down there. Just some little designs. But the part that is a template is the word wine drinker and the word camping. Those are, those are the template parts. Those can be swapped, interchanged, all you want with any different niches, any type, any type of intersecting audiences. Just another blank with a blank problem. So whenever you, see, whenever you see shirt designs, always think of the word blank. Put the word blank in there. When you're at the, when you're at the mall, look at, the word, look at whatever the design is and, and think, kind of put the word blank in there. When you're on Pinterest and you're looking at cool little picture quotes, same thing. Kind of put a blank in there. If you ever find a blank, it becomes a template design. Template designs are money makers. Because if you test one design and it sells well, and the design, and you know it sells well, then you can experiment. You don't even have to come up with more designs. You can just swap out words, and you can experiment with 20, 30 different niches. It works really well. You'll notice they have a much bigger description here. They're using a lot. 
Beer and camping. So let's look at a couple of their other shirts really quick. Beer and camping and um, whiskey and camping. They're doing, the, uh, they're doing the same thing, just another beer drinker with a camping problem. So remember you had just another wine drinker, just another beer drinker, just another whiskey drinker. See what they're doing? They're basically taking people who are interested in camping who are also interested in whiskey. Now, as a quick disclaimer, if you're ever advertising alcohol or anything of that nature, anything at all that's adult related, guns, alcohol, anything like that, um, always make sure you're targeting an audience of 21 years and older. You have to make sure you're doing that. Facebook will potentially shut down your ads account because it's just Facebook does not want to have 18 year old kids seeing a whiskey uh, t shirt. Okay? Make sure you do that. <clears throat> it's important. I mean, I even ran a billiards shirt, billiards, pool, pool billiards, and you have to run 21 and old, older for that. Billiards is representative of a bar term in Facebook's terms. So you have to go 21 and older if you're doing billiards. So if there's anything at all that might be remotely close, you want to make sure you do 21 and older. Plus, 21 and older is not a bad idea. They're more likely to have credit cards, anyways. Okay, so here's some examples. How about this one right here? Uh, two colors, green and pink. I just want to work in my garden and drink wine. This is targeting women who have an interest in gardening who also have an intersecting interest in wine. Facebook will provide you this data. Imagine the world of possibilities. Imagine the world of possibilities of intersecting audiences. Not only can you intersect two interests, such as gardening and wine, <clears throat> but you can also layer on there other interests, such as grandma, a grandma who likes gardening and likes wine, or women who like gardening and like wine, or whatever it is. This is one of the keys to, um, to doing this. So <clears throat> let's go and let's, um, let's shut out some of these shirts really quick. Let's go back to the main category. And let's go to, let's go back to shop. Let's look at a couple other really quick. <clears throat> so that was, we went to the pets category. I kind of dove around a little bit. And let's kind of look back. Uh, let's see. This doesn't mean these shirts are selling well. You just get ideas. I love pugs. Okay, so <clears throat> an example there is not just targeting dog lovers, but targeting a specific breed of dogs. Okay, think about a dog. Think about a pit bull. The kind of um, the kind of person that owns a pit bull. When you take your pit bull out in public. There's going to be a lot of people who probably are anti-pit bull or think it's a dangerous dog, don't understand, but you own the pit bull. So you're thinking, I love my pit bull. My pit bull's nice. I don't get why people give me such a hard time. So you have to become super passionate. In order to be a pit bull dog owner, you have to become more passionate than a pug dog owner. Because to own a pit bull means you have to have some thick skin to be able to deal with people that are not going to be happy with you owning a pit bull. So by nature, you're even more defensive over your dog. So you're more proud of the fact you're a pit bull owner. So think about that. People, when you, when you relate to them as a pet owner, you also relate to them. That's why you're seeing, I love my pugs, or circle of trust. My boxer, you'll see like right here, my boxer is inside the circle, and then you are outside the circle. <laughs> so here, here's an example of a template shirt, okay? The circle of trust. I, I first heard about this from, I think it was Robert De Niro in oh, some yeah. movie. I'm sure maybe it existed before then. Meet the parents or something. Um, and there was the circle of trust, and he was out of the circle of trust. So there's, this is a template idea. Could this work if you, if you said blank? Could the my boxer in the image there, could that be blank? Circle of trust, my blank, and then you, right? This could work with any pet. My pug, my pit bull, my boxer, my cat, right? You see what I'm saying? My anything. You could start to come up with ideas like this. And then what happens is people see it, and it's funny. So you have a shirt with a decent design. People see it, and it's funny, but where it really speaks to them is my boxer. I own a boxer. This is funny, but it's also meaningful. And then I go and it's not available in stores, limited time only, and it's only available till Friday and timer's about to run down. Well, guess what? At that point, I've created uh, design plus targeting plus urgency plus scarcity, all wrapped up, plus a little bit of uh, trust because Teespring, the site, it, we, you know, secure checkout, all this kind of stuff. And suddenly, that's the formula for a winning uh, t-shirt campaign. So these are just examples. I mean, you can keep going all these categories. What I want you to do is do some research yourself um, and just kind of keep, keep researching, keep, keep looking for different stuff. I mean, let's go maybe fish. Okay, or let's even just do it. Let's even just do a, um, 
we'll type in like fishing. You can, let's use the search button here, okay? So let's look at a couple of these shirts really quick. Fishing, okay. How about this shirt here? I had to call in sick. My arm is in a cast. Okay, so if you are, if you are, into, if you are into fishing, it's a very simple design, one color, silhouette of a person fly fishing. You could target fishing, you could probably even target fly fishing. With a shirt like this, that's how you do it. You go through and that's exactly how you do it. You just, you just do that targeting, okay? So you just kind of go through and you kind of find these cool, cool ideas. And you don't copy them, you just kind of like, fishing saved me from being a porn star, now I'm just a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a fisherman's girl and I am the catch of his life. This is targeting uh, the, 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 what I would do. There's a couple things you could do here, even reverse targeting. I could target, um, yeah, I could actually target the guy and say, buy this for your girlfriend, something like that. Uh, get the mic in the back. We're going to have a question here. Okay, I fish so I don't choke people. And that's the that same line with the punch people that we were talking about earlier. I fish so I don't punch people, so I don't choke people. It's kind of saying, like, just let me be in peace and do the thing I love. You know, people annoy me. Um, you know, so there's all kinds of like, so what are you seeing a lot of here? We're seeing a lot of, um, we're seeing a lot of phrases and I'll show you a gold mine to be able to look up phrases, but we're seeing a lot of phrases that are like picture quote type phrases that are being turned into designs. Um, and how about this last one and then we'll take a question. There aren't many things I love more than fishing, but one of them is being a papa. Okay. See that now that's targeting men who fish who are fathers on Facebook. And it's that simple. It's just a decent design, just like we, just like we talked about before. There aren't, many, there aren't many things I love more than fishing, but one of them is being Papa. Okay? Pretty cool. And you could also target um, daughters and sons and say, buy this shirt for your father. Okay, let's take a, uh, before we dive in, let's take a question in the back of the room here. So my question is, Will, they, will these companies, or is there a company that would work with you and allow um, the respondents to uh, customize their own, um, uh, their own feedback? Like, for example, um, Circle of Trust. I could see uh, my mom in there, and you're outside the Circle of Trust. Um, uh, and people could uh, become engaged in, in having a creative role also. But that sounds like another level of customer service. Okay, so the, the question is, is there a way to further engage with your audience rather than on these platforms? So the, the answer is not, the answer is no, not on these platforms. These platforms are, are strictly built for converting sales. That's all they're intended. Get the visitor on and as fast as possible get them to buy. What happens is when you're running advertisements to these, when you're making posts on Facebook, all of the engagements will happen on your fan page. So part of this process is going through the Facebook advertising, learning how to create a fan page uh, about fishing. You'll create a fan page about fishing. You'll create a post or two uh, marketing this shirt, and then there will be potentially thousands of comments that are there. People, people, go, people go crazy in the comments. You don't have to respond to all of them, but people just love, when you deal with a passionate subject, people love this. What they start doing is they start tagging people that should buy this. So what happens is this thing takes off virally. They're like, oh my God, you have to see this. They'll tag, oh, Bob, you have to see this. This, is, this shirt's made for you. And then Bob comes and checks it out, and that's free. So you pay advertising to reach people, and then they start tagging their friends and make it go viral. And then that's how, that, that's how you'll see like 4,000 shirts will sell. And, um, and you guys remember the math, right? 4,000 shirts times, um, times, let's say there was $10 profit. So you saw that shirt. So 4,000, and I think that shirt was $24.95. But if you just do 4,000, let's just say your profit uh, after ad spend, so you'd say $5, up to $5 in ad spend. Let's say your profit after ad spend is $10 right there. That's $40,000 profit. And let's say that was this shirt here. Okay? So doesn't the $800 in losses seem silly at that point to get that one winner? So as you get more experienced, you start to realize that it's a little bit of like an up and down game where it's like, oh, I'll, I would have, at $40,000 profit, I would have gladly lost several thousand here, no problem. But when you're losing the money and you don't have the profitable shirt yet, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. So it's all about finding that one winner. 
But when you have a shirt that's selling 4,000 shirts, the comments are going to explode, which is good. You want the comments to explode because that's what creates virality. On Facebook, you're boosting the post to create to pay for some people to come see it, but when they start commenting, liking, tagging their friends, Facebook shows it in their friends' news feeds and, and notifies them, and then it starts exploding and growing from there. Do we have another question? Okay, so, um, and look, they're putting like, look, they threw in a top seller graphic. I don't even know if they're a top seller. They just threw in a top seller graphic, so who knows? I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a Teespring thing or not. I really don't even know. That might even be just be their own graphic they threw in. Top seller. It's a good idea though, huh, for <laughs> authority. Yeah, it's, just, it's like genius. I'm a top seller. Says who? My mom told me. I'm the, you're the top, son. <laughs> you're, you're number one in my book, right? Um, okay, you never want to be misleading, but there's plenty of creative things you could do to establish authority. Okay, so you guys get it. This is in a category here, funny men's. I mean, you can go through here and... It, it would, it would behoove you, if you ever are going to get a printed demand, it would behoove you to do some research. Go to these sites and go and see, see all these sites. Now, part of it, you can just get a kick out of some of these, but then you can get ideas. The beard length me measurement shirt. Who would have thought, you know? <laughs> so you just kind of get ideas. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to stop there, and we're going to go through the process real quick of a create and sell. Um, okay, so here's kind of what it looks like. When you go to a site like this, they're all very, very similar. How it works is you can either type in text to be on your shirt or you can upload artwork. Now, as crazy as it seems, I've seen people sell with text, but please don't do it. It looks so tacky, you know? This looks tacky, okay? <laughs> it just does. There's your shirt. <laughs> now, somebody might actually buy that one. <laughs> But it would be hard to target that. <laughs> yeah, this looks tacky. But, but it would be hard to target that. Um, so well, if it was something funny. even if it was something funny, it would be better to pay $5 to an outsourcer to, to use some decent fonts so it just looks better. But yeah, I guess there is a market for this. But in my experience, there's a bigger market for those other shirts we looked at that have uh, different kind of display to them. So. Also, so let's talk about real quick. When you're uploading a graphic here, the graphic needs to have a transparent background. Okay, you can't just upload a block. Let's 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 show some designs. I'll give you an example. Okay, so let's do um, fishing quote, and I'll show you an example of how bad it'll look. Let's go to Google Images. Okay, so remember I told you there's an endless source of ideas. Whatever your niche is, you can just type quote. And you can come in here and you can even do funny quote, funny fishing quote, stuff like that. I got 99 problems and fishing solves all of them. Okay? There's an example. You, got idea, you can start getting ideas. And does anybody see where a blank could be put into this quote? Where does the blank go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got 99 problems and a blank solves, and blank solves all of them. That is a template. Okay? So you kind of go, um, you just kind of do some stuff. So, when you take a quote like this, you're like, oh, this looks really good or whatever. And when you save this image, save this image as, and then we're going to go back to this t-shirt designer, going to click art, and you're going to upload your own artwork. Okay, and we're going to go to desktop and we're going to modify, there it is. Sending image. And this is, by the way, this is how, in case you weren't paying attention, this is how not to do it. Okay. That's how not to do it. Now, there might be a situation where the design is really good, and sometimes, like, it's like I call it Hollywood esque feel. Sometimes, if the design is really good, it can look good as a square block on a shirt. It has been done. Um, like, my business partner Jim has this amazing shirt that's literally like just a big square on the shirt. It looks good, especially with a sport coat over it. There's a time and place for that. Generally speaking, though, it's amateur hour to just have a big block on a shirt. It just looks like literally like somebody just printed it or it's, you know, they're themselves from home. So this is not what you would want to do. What you'd want to do is you'd want to take this quote or whatever or take something similar to it or maybe mix it up a little bit and you'd want to create like a, you know, create a whole thing about it. So what I might do instead of 99 problems, let's look at this, 99 problems, t-shirt, funny. And let's see. Okay, so here's, here's an example. I got 99 problems and they're all due tomorrow. 
I've got 99 problems and 93 of them are completely made up scenarios in my head. So you start to look and see how people have designed. Now, what I would actually do is I'd actually come right here and do this, right to Teespring. It's not like you're the first person to come up with an idea. And so look at this, right? I got 99 problems and fly fishing solves all of them. I got 99 problems and fishing solves all of them. So here's an example of how to take a quote, turn it into a shirt. So one of the first things I do is like, so you look at this and you go, okay, what have they done? They've essentially taken a, a popular quote or whatever. They put the first part and the bottom part and they put the elements. So now you're looking back at elements. The elements is a fisherman fishing. Um, and that's the thing is that you can start to learn that blank, when you change the word blank, you also can change the element to be whatever it is. And bowling solves all of them. Okay? So you can start to look. And you can, you can also search in your 99 problems. Bowling. Okay? See? 99 problems and bowling ain't one. I got 99 problems and bowling solves all of them. I got 99 problems and beer solves all of them with bowling. It's a, a hybrid shirt. So you see, this is how people are thinking. Like, look at this. I got 99 problems and beer solves all of them. Bowlers rock. So it's basically beer and bowling combination. Just people are just getting creative. Doesn't mean this sold well. This might have been one of the floppers. But you also notice two-sided. 2015 Rock the Pins Tour, 99. This might have even just been, per, this might have even, they just probably did this for a tournament or for a group even. Okay? So you can also do two-sided like that as well. So you start to look and you start to get ideas. Okay? So when you, what you want is you want to, you really want to design that has kind of like a transparent background. So let's do a fishing quote. Let's see if there's like a, a one with a transparent background. Really quick that we can grab. So a transparent background means that it's not a block. Um, that one might be. I'll probably have to look at something different besides um, fishing. Um, I don't want to make it transparent really quick. Let me just see if I see one really quick. OK, there's an example of transparent. So I'm on Google Images. If, the, if an image is white, okay, well that's a white background. See how it's got a white background here? But notice as soon as I clicked on this one, it's got this checkered background. That illustrates that it's transparent. Okay, so that's, that's transparent. See, this one has a white background on it, and that one has a, like a checkered. That means that in Google Images, that's transparent. So that's like an example. So even though it looks white, if I save this image, fish face. And we go to upload it. Let's, let's ditch this one. Let's trash that. And let's also ditch this. Let's trash that. Let's upload my own artwork. And the reason you want to upload something, uh, your own artwork, that is uh, transparent is because now it will work on multiple colors. So now look at this. See how it doesn't have that white background? So see, it's going to work on all these colors. Yeah, you can search no background. But essentially, but I'm just, you actually wouldn't just go to Google Images to your shirt. So you would tell your designer, you would just show your designer, like, I want to have no background on it. I want it to be transparent. And they'll make it. But you understand why. It's that, that that design has to look good on multiple things. It has to look good on a mug, on a case, on everything. It's got to look good. Also, um, this is an example of a brand. So this goes back to like Ari's question earlier. Ari has his brand. This is the same thing. This is somebody's brand. It's going to be a lot harder to sell this brand because... In order for people to buy this shirt, they have to like that brand. So when you're branding, when you're selling your own brand, people have to know you, like you, and trust you in order to want to wear your brand on their clothing. So it takes a, long, a lot of money in branding. But somebody will easily wear a shirt that just says, I got 99 problems, but fishing solves all of them. No branding needed. They'll buy that without even thinking. That's the difference. That's why it's a little bit easier. So let's just take this fish face one just as an example, just really quick. Um, and let's look over here. Base cost at 50 units is $8.57. So this shirt right here is going to cost $8.57. That's my base cost. Anything above that that I sell it for is profit. Okay? So what I want to do, and, and there's two things. I can sell this or I can buy this. Some people just want to make it themselves. So I can look. Hanes Tagless Tea, $8.57. So let's go ahead and let's sell this. And then it's going to ask me to set a goal. Um, of how many units I want to sell, and then it's going to give me a time frame. So let's just say I'm going to sell 50 units. My estimated profit when I sell 50 units is $670. So when the 50 units sell, I'm estimated to do $670. But look, um, as you go up higher, you'll notice that the profit not only goes higher because you're selling more, but the margin gets a little bit better. So as you start to sell more, your margin gets a little bit better. Okay? 
So that's also based on this price here. Uh, Haynes tagless T. I'm making 15. If I sell 427, I'm making $15 profit per sale. Remember we talked about 15, but if I sell 50, I'm making $13.42 per profit per sale. So you see, the more you sell, you start making more money. Now in the beginning, it might not matter much. Now if you just sell five, only $8.24. So you see the difference? You sell five versus 400, you're making $8 profit versus making $15 profit. So you wanna, the idea is that you wanna find your winners, then you wanna scale up a big campaign like that. Now, that's on $21.99. What do we change to $24.99? Remember we saw those other shirts on $24.99? And then let's say that we sell 400. $18 profit per sale. 18, 18 bucks. That's huge. Remember, we just did it on $10 profit right there. That, based on this number here, if we sold 4,000 of whatever, we could probably run, let's even, I don't know if it'll go up to 4,000 in this number of units here. We could try though. Oh, it just goes 1,000, $18.33. So basically, then it maxes you out. So literally, that $40,000 in profits, realistic if you, if you do a shirt like this. And this is just a one color font, transparent shirt. So you go in here and you choose. I would say when you're first starting, it's probably like 50 or whatever. Let's just do 50. And then you choose your price, $24.99. Now you can add more colors with these tools and you can add more styles here. Now what I'll do is we'll have a different Teespring tutorial. I don't need to jump into all of this. We'll have a full blown Teespring. This is just a general overview. But you'll go in here, at, click add a style, and then there's a hoodie, it's recommending a hoodie. Now we got a hoodie. You go down here and add a style, and it's recommending a premium tee, okay, or a crew tee. And it's giving me different options now for people. And I can go in here and I can make the prices whatever. So it's showing $16 profit, $14 profit, $20 profit on that, and it's just giving me different, it's giving me suggested pricing. And I can go in here and do the colors too. I can say, okay, I want an orange one in each one of these. I want a red one there, orange there. And now it's giving me multiple colors and it lets me preview them all as well. So I can click on this and click on this and I can go through and I can, I can basically arrange this and make it look just right how I want it, get everything looking the way I want. So what I do is I come in here and I, just, I choose what goal I want to create, how many units I think I'm going to sell, and then I want to choose my pricing and I want to choose what different types of t-shirts and colors and stuff that I want to make available. And there you go. There you have it. And I can choose also design on the back. And then you just go to next. And then you're going to do your campaign title. I'm going to fish face exclusive shirt. Um, you know, something like limited edition for fish face fans only, not available in stores, secure payment via credit card and PayPal. And truth be told, you'd probably just copy and paste some stuff in here because. No, I just, I'm just messing around really quick. Campaign length. Remember, you could choose the length. The, the, the sooner it ends, the sooner you get paid. But the sooner it ends, the less you're going to sell. So you got to have like some sort of a combination of, I want to sell as many as possible, as fast as possible. Okay, so you're probably going to do seven days. Maybe if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer, 14 days, give you some more time to get it right. So let's say you choose 14 days. URL, that's gonna, it's going to give one to you, or you can choose one. Uh, and then you just can launch it, okay? So, and we're gonna go, there's gonna be a tutorial in this section that actually shows how to do this a little bit better. So on each, on each of the different platforms, you know, we're gonna show different, several different ones. So here's my page. I've uploaded it, I've chosen prices and options. As you can see here, you can get a Hanes tagless tee, you can get a Gildan blended hoodie, um, you can get this American Apparel Crew, and then depending on what you choose, you can also choose another color. So just like this, all these options exist. There's my fish face hoodie, and reserve it now, only three more needed to print. So it needs at least a few to print. So that's gonna get, get a couple orders going for you. And then you get, uh, it says, don't worry, you won't be charged unless the minimum is reached. And we could you can choose a different minimum, stuff like that, but there's a few. And then people can go here and they can reserve it, which means that they're basically, they're reserving it because if nobody else buys it, they don't get charged. So it's like a social uh, kind of platform like that. But you have your page here. The other thing you have is you have the ability, this link here, you have the ability to link directly to this page, which would show the fish face orange front. Or you can go directly to the fish face orange white uh, hoodie. Or you can go, so you can go to any one of these pages and then you can have a direct link right up there. Now, as we get advanced in this a little bit more, you can actually learn, when you get a little bit more advanced, you can put tracking code on it. You can know exactly 
what ad sold what and all that's in there. But on a very basic level, what do we just do? We just literally threw up a logo on there. By the way, if you didn't get the idea, we just found that in Google Images, it's not my company, not my logo. Uh, and that wouldn't sell well anyways. You'd want to get a nice quote. But look at how simple that was. Set up a free account with Teespring, upload an image, choose what shirts you want, and then it builds you a page. And now, 14 days later, it calculates all my sales and it cuts me a check. That's pretty easy. Do I have to do paid advertising? No. I could just market it for free. Maybe I have some free advertising methods. Maybe social media, maybe SEO, maybe something else. Maybe I build a phishing community for free and I just use search engine optimization. There's lots of ways to get traffic. But once you figure this out, it's game on. You can start printing money. So that's kind of an overview of, uh, I wanted to give you an overview of print on demand. Before we wrap up this section on print on demand and, and dive into the resources that are below, the resources you'll find in this section are going to be things like case studies of success, more case studies. You're going to hear from some students that are actually doing very, very well with this. You're going to get some resources. You're going to see there's lots of other platforms than just Teespring. You're going to see a lot of those, really a lot more information here on print on demand. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood it enough that they can move on with it. So before we wrap up print on demand, does anybody have any questions about print on demand? I was just curious, um, is there a certain type of uh, format that sells better, like funny type stuff opposed to serious stuff? You said sports were really popular. Is there somewhat of a target? Or? OK, good question. So basically, OK, hey, I'm interested in print on demand. Is there something that sells better than something else? Does sports sell better? Does dog owners, whatever, sell better? Um, Really, the thing that sells better is that one creative idea that really nobody else has really tapped and spent money on. When you get that, that creative idea in your head, um, that's where it like goes, goes really well. I remember um, the first time I ever really got started in print on demand, I had some very fortunate success early out the gates. I did sports, and sports is very risky because you can't really use team names or anything, but there was a stadium that was closing down for a sports team, and I did one of those like commemorative you know, um, it just basically had a silhouette of a stadium and just had the years that the stadium was around, very simple. And I targeted fans and it was a simple $20 design. And it kind of was like a farewell shirt, a commemorative farewell shirt. And that shirt, I mean, I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. I was very amateur at the time, still made over $30,000 in profit on it. Um, but some shirts that I thought were like huge hits, like I was targeting fans of Breaking Bad TV show, fans of Entourage, fans of Walking Dead. Um, I targeted country music, women and country music, stuff like that. Those shirts flopped. Knowing what I know now, though, it was obvious to see why they flopped. When you're a beginner, you just don't know. You're just like, throw mud on the wall and see what sticks. Um, I, uh, I, I find, my experience has told me that, in my experience, that women tend to buy more than men. So I tend to target women more. Um, I also, uh, I target niches where people are passionate in them. I always kind of ask myself, are they passionate? Like, not just a niche, but like, are they legitimately passionate? Like, like a moment ago, we talked about the circle of trust. We said, okay, I can see like my mom being in there. Okay, that is a straightforward statement. My mom is in my circle of trust, you're not. But that's not really something super uber passionate as much as like my pug is in my circle of trust. That draws out a whole other level of passion. Um, like, I'm proud to be a pug owner. So it's not I'm proud to have a mom, right? So it's like you look at the ideas and you go, what really, dry, what really draws people's passion? What I would do <clears throat> is I would go into sites like Teespring and I would go look through all of this stuff, really do some research, spend, spend an hour one Sunday afternoon while football's playing in the background, whatever, and just deep dive in here and look and see what are, what are some of these ideas that are out there? Then what I would do is I'd go to sites like Pinterest. Um, let's see, I'll pull it up. I'd go to sites like Pinterest and I would start looking at like quotes about those things. So let's take like pug quotes or something. Oops, spell quotes wrong. Pug quotes. You know, and, and then people have already like, there's just so many of like memes and stuff on the internet. Um, you know, there are no bad days when you come home to a pug. And then a, a blank. I always look at it as blank. There are no bad days when you come home to a blank. Now, then what I do is I go back over to Teespring or whatever shirt, and I'll do like no bad days, when, and see if there's anybody else kind of using that template. Um, there we go. There are no bad days when you come home to a Scotty. There are no bad days when you come home to a pug. So people are doing it. Doesn't mean it's selling. It doesn't mean that you still shouldn't do it, but it just kind of shows you this is how people are coming up with ideas. 
And of course, that's popular because like literally I, I typed in pug quote and it was the first quote that popped up. Somebody else probably did the same thing. So, but you look and you kind of see, you're like, look at this, there's no bad days. Look at this, somebody themed this whole thing out, you know, of all this kind of stuff. So um, you kind of go in here and you kind of look for quotes. What I love to do, where I find my home runs is I find a passionate audience and I find a quote. Like that quote's about pugs. But then you go like, what else could that be used for? You know, like there are no bad days when you come home to a pit bull. And then, and then you can start to, you can do a little bit of research, like no bad days when you come home to a pit bull. You can go like Google images and see. And you see that there's the pug one, but you really don't see one for a pit bull, okay? So now that's an example. It's like, and there's one right here. There are no bad days when you come home to a Boston Terrier. So you see people are templating it out. And that's just a basic example, but like, that's what, I, that's what to me what sells well is, when you, can get an, when you can get a concept that's proven, but put your own twist on it, that's maybe like something out there. Like, what are, what are people passionate about? Like, okay, Comic-Con is, is a huge event. Comic-Con, you got all these people dressed up in all their favorite, favorite comic book heroes, outfits and everything like that. These people are so passionate that they wait the whole entire year for this event. There's, there's passion, so you start to realize like, there's terminology, there's things that are all said there. I could take one niche, like that whole Comic-Con niche, and I could come up with probably like 50 to 100 different types of things that could be done in that one niche, and I could just go off on that because there's people that are passionate there. There's, it's really anything. You really want to find, I like to target, personally I like to target, my, my audience, my demographic is women, 35 to 55, who are passionate about certain things. That's my target audience. Um, let me see, uh, let's see. Maybe I could pull up a graphic design one if it's in here and show you live. Let's see, graphic design, t-shirt designs. So what I do is I'll just basically, like I'll give you an example. This is, this is, these are old, so don't, this is just an old folder I have, so don't take this as like gospel. These are, these are old. These are from your, like back in 2014, 2015. But this is what I do is I have a t-shirt designer come in and design, I'll just pay a t-shirt designer to design stuff and all kinds. So like give you an example. Um, UFC and MMA related shirts, C10 trucks. Think about that as a weird niche. C10 trucks. Grandmas who like to motorcycle. <laughs> Second Amendment. People are very proud of the Second Amendment. You know, they're proud of their guns. Or there's people that are anti guns, and it works both ways. Doctor Who, fans of the Doctor Who, fans of Star Trek, fans of Star Wars, fans of TV shows. Car related, people love their cars. Um, crochet. I figured, why not? I know nothing about crochet. Um, yeah, there's, there's, my, there's the shirt I had done. If crocheting burned more calories, I'd be a skinny hooker. You know, because why not? Okay, I admit it, I'm a hooker. So I just did like a play on words. Try it once, I'll get you hooked. This girl is hooked, and it's got the little crochet hook. So what you do is you go on Facebook and you target women who are interested in crochet. You, you do these four shirts and you see if there's any bites. And if there's any bites at all of any profit, you cancel the ones that aren't, you scale up the ones that are. And designs like this, you can, if you get a designer, if you pay, if you, once you get a designer is good, you can basically do a bulk deal with them. It ends up being like five or $10 per design. You can just have them do a whole bunch of stuff. Just these are examples. Um, uh, this is the kind of stuff that like, seriously, um, I just play around with it. But like, this is, like, look at all these. Okay, Second Amendment women. Okay, so let's do like, What's one that I sold a lot of? Okay, I sold a lot of this one right here. Several thousand of this one I sold. So this one here made tens of thousands of dollars. This chick is packing women for the Second Amendment. Sold several thousand of this. I could probably dive in it. If I could find the case today, I could probably dive into it. So what do we have? We have a design with elements, right? So we have, first of all, it's transparent. You can see the background behind it, so you know it's transparent. It's using red, white, and blue which is themed uh, American. It's got a gun, which is relatively risky to advertise on Facebook. So you, you know, got to be a little, you have to have a little risk threshold if you're going to advertise guns on Facebook. Um, this chick is packing. Um, I, I got a lot of feedback in the comments that, peop, that the women didn't like to be referred to as chick, but it sold thousands. So it's kind of like, whatever. Um, you got to kind of deal with that a little bit. Women for the Second Amendment. I kind of, I did a theme. My theme was, women for the Second Amendment, not 
proud supporter of the Second Amendment. No, women for the Second Amendment. Bring in more, proud, more pride. This chick is packing. And this, this, this was like one of ten, or however many ten designs here. I ran all the designs. Only two of them sold. This is the one that sold. And there was one more that sold. Um, this one here. No, maybe not. Yeah, this one. This one sold. This girl loves her gun. Women for the Second Amendment. Those are the only two that sold. I ran all of them. That doesn't mean that I couldn't rerun these ones differently, but those are the only ones that, that sold. All of these other ones. Look at all these, all of, I lost money on all these. But lost money was relative, right? Because you put money into these buckets. You just put money in these piles, okay? Here's $1,000 here, $1,000 here, $1,000 there. And when it's all said and done, there's 30000 in profit. But when you look at it individually, it's like, it's like stock market. You know, you've got five stocks that are down and 10 stocks that are up. So you're technically losing money. But these 10 stocks that are up, you know, you're, you're making more than you're losing. That's kind of how I look at it like the stock market there. But look at all these. I mean, I thought this one would be a winner down here. I actually did. It did sell. This one sold a bunch. And maybe I could have ran it differently. Don't let the purse fool you. This chick packs the big guns. I was like, that thing's going to sell. <laughs> and then, you know, didn't. So I don't know. You never know. And I think they didn't like, I think they didn't like the pink. And I think if I redid, I redid this, I think I had them actually redesign it. Because, they, yeah, version two. Because I got the feedback that the girls didn't like the pink. And look what I did. I made it red. Because I was reading in the comments. They're like, I wouldn't, I, this is so good, but I wouldn't buy pink. It's like, really? Chicks that like guns didn't want pink. They just wanted red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue is what they wanted. So, um, We'll probably have a couple questions. This is, what I'm doing is I'm kind of diving in to kind of show you some examples of what I did. Let me show you a couple more and then we'll take questions. Go back to t-shirt designs, Walking Dead, car related. So let's see, car related. Oh, and then I also experimented with getting models, like the models you can purchase to use and putting the actual shirt design on the models. So like right here, there's a model transparent. And it says, whoever said diamonds were a girl's best friend never owned a Mustang. Okay? So it's targeting women who are essentially basically proud of their cars. And then I would target basically women who are interested in Mustangs. And I would do all the different years, all the different stuff like that. But mostly, um, I would do mostly muscle car. Women that were into muscle cars would be more likely to do that. Um, and then you just do it like this. You create the shirt, uh, girl's best friend Mustang. You do it just like this. You get the shirt like this. And then could this be a blank shirt? Where's the blank in this? Mustang. Mustang. Whoever said diamonds were a girl's best friend never owned a blank. And then the element, the, the silhouette version of a clip art of a Mustang uh, element, I just could swap that out with anything. Let's see. Here's an example of a swapped, swapped template. Women, uh, whoever said diamonds were a girl's best friend never owned a Camaro. Okay. So same kind of thing. Um, here's one right here. Um, killing Camaros, Ford, killing Camaros since 1967. And then, you know, eating ponies, same thing right here, same kind of play off the words, trying to tap, tap into people's passion. People that are into muscle cars, is another, it's just another passion. So these are, I'm just showing you a bunch of random examples of um, when I got started with this. This is before I really started teaching it. Um, and, you know, military, I, I did this whole, I went and talked to my military friend and I said, hey, I've never been in the military. What are some phrases and what are some terms that people in the military use that everybody would know? And we started brainstorming and then eventually he said, uh, tap, rack, bang. And I actually didn't know what it meant, but it had something to do with uh, loading guns, right? loading a gun and checking it, the, the, their system of like making sure that the, the guns loaded properly or tested. And so I was like, all right, let's try it. So what I did was I had him do all these tap, rack, bang, bang shirts. I'll give you an example. And I went with the whole theme. Right here, tap, rack, bang is the, is the phrase that would be recognized. And then you've kind of got the stars and the, the skull and the guns to kind of be a mili militaristic kind of a shirt. And just tons, tons of examples right here. So, you know, I have them do a bunch, a bunch of different examples. So what I'll do is I'll get one theme. Oh, this one, this one sold. This one and, and one that was green. I had this one and a green one that sold. So this one right here actually did sell. This one did well. This was profitable. I don't think I made a lot of money, but thousands of dollars, which is a lot to some, but not a lot compared to what you could make. Yeah, this green one sold too. This one right there. So look at all these elements in there. I mean, there's a lot of elements going on. There's guns, there's birds, there's skulls, there's stars, there's, you know, the ribbons, there's um, different types of guns. And then there's, the, then there's the statement, the tap rack bang statement, which is, so you would advertise the military and they would only know this. So 
there's way there there's just all these different um, different niches like the C10 trucks. Like look at this. Look at how simple this is. This girl loves C10 trucks. So you just do you advertise Facebook interest, choose C10 trucks, and then you do women. And to, to illustrate this on a very simple level, you can go to the Facebook advertising um, section uh, of the Impact Series to really get a, to really dial that in and go into Facebook advertising to get a little bit more. But let's just just for for, for real simple um, purposes, watch this. You're going to go in. You're going to get details here. You're just really simple. Women. C10. Okay, uh, maybe I'll type in C10 trucks. Uh, C10. C10 truck. Okay, well, I'll have to go into the other one. C10 truck, pickup truck, C10, 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 C10. I'll have to go and get the C10 truck. I, there's a term. It comes up as a related search. It's not coming up on this exact example. But anyways, there's a. Once I start doing all the terms, it'll pick it up. But yeah, there's a C10 trucks um, was a search term that we found. And then once we found it, let's see, these are all behaviors. Okay, so let's just go see if it'll pull it up. Trucks. Pickup trucks. So you just kind of go in here to interest, and it'll start recommending a lot. Let's see if it'll just do it automatically. But anyways, there is a, if I just, plug, if I just pasted it in the exact interest, it would, it would show it. But that's how you'd find it. You just go in here and you find like your interests, pickup trucks, additional interests, hobbies, vehicles, different types of vehicles, and then eventually it'll show you the C10. Right now it's not pulling up. I don't know why. Try to see that as well. Looks like that's not available. Yeah, that's probably it. I don't know. Yeah. Get the related interests. See, some of you know how to advertise. <laughs> Chevy trucks, Chevy trucks right there. So anyways, eventually it starts pulling up. See how it's doing like Ford F-Series, stuff like that? Eventually, when you get, it'll start showing you related interest, and that's how I'd find that C10. Right now, for the sake of, I'm just going to move on, just because I don't feel like doing it. It's not the Facebook advertising module, but essentially, you'll eventually find that little C10 truck audience. And when you find that little C10 truck audience, and you choose women interested in C10, you got several hundred thousand women, about 500,000 or a million women, and then you just advertise directly to them. It's literally not too much more difficult than that. I don't know why it's not... Um, Showing up. Sorry about that. Um, but that's what I do. I just go find these like little niche markets. These little niche stuff. Country girls. Let's look at this country girls one real quick. Okay. Country girls don't run, they reload. Very, very simple concepts, right? Um, targeting women who um, country girls play like a boy, love like an angel, and know their way around a shotgun. Okay? So this is appealing to, this is appealing to a woman who, who a woman who wants to be uh, recognized in her feminine woman spirit, but at the same time, I was also like, hey, I'm down. I got I'm, I'm down to get dirty and get a carry out a shotgun and be, be with one of the boys too. So it's tailoring to that that Midwestern type, uh, Southern type type girl who's one of the boys, and it works incredibly well. Women are proud of that. So you could target women that are interested, interested in country music. You could target women that are interested in guns, all kinds of stuff. There's really easy targeting for this, and that's why I choose this kind of stuff all the time. It's just easy targeting. So that's what I do. I go in and like just tons and tons and tons of logos. LGBT made a lot of money in that niche as well. Um, fitness, pet owners, scrapbooking. How about that one? I made money in scrapbooking. Let me see which one it was. A scrapbook thing. It's this one. This is the one that sold. Right there. Simple. It's a scrapbook thing you wouldn't understand. That was it. Targeted women who are interested in. I just went here to interested in scrap booking. Right. So United States alone, ages 18 to 65 females who have an interest in scrapbooking, Two million. So the audience of two million people there, just on a general women interested in scrapbooking in the United States, two million. I'm actually curious how many men are interested in scrapbooking. <laughs> Seventy-four thousand. <laughs> slight, slight difference. So you wouldn't want to make it. It's a, a, a men's shirt. So there you go. Just like that. When, when what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll go in and I'll. So again, in summary, design plus targeting, right? 
This is targeting. If I know there's 2 million p women in the United States alone that like scrapbooking, it's at least worth it to me to come up with a cool scrapbooking shirt and try it. Worst case, I'm out 100 bucks or whatever it is, but I can live with that. It's at least worth trying because if I hit it, I don't know how many other people are doing scrapbooking. So I started doing scrapbooking when I didn't see anybody doing scrapbooking, but that was a couple of years ago. Now probably there's a lot of scrapbooking stuff. But yeah, that's like, see the whole template? I scrapbook so I don't choke people. Same kind of thing. How about this one? Scrapbooking is a sport. It involves cutting. Let's see. Scrapbooking is a sport. It involves cutting, punching, matting, double mounting, curling, and hunting for enough supplies for one page. Woohoo, I'm an athlete. Well, here's the thing. So what happened with scrapbooking was I was at, I was at an event, and in the waiting room, um, there were these women that were crocheting. There was three of them that were crocheting in the waiting room. And I started talking to them about crocheting, and they were so passionate about it. It's like, oh, we have a crochet club. We always go crochet together, yada, yada, yada. And then I was like, oh, really? What else do you guys do? They're like, we also have a scrapbooking club. And it was like they just got there. They lit up, and I, that's why I did crochet. Right after that meeting, I was like, go home, crochet, scrapbooking. And I, I just went on uh, Pinterest and started typing in quotes, and that's how I found it. Sold the shirts and did thousands of sales. So uh, let's stop here and let's do questions. When you do your, your 10 campaigns, is that 10 campaigns, each campaign is a, uh, a similar theme or is it separate themes? You can do, okay, so when you're doing, when you're testing multiple campaigns, do you test um, all like 10 scrapbooking shirt designs or do you test like scrapbooking, crochet, trucks, military? Um, personally, uh, there's no right or wrong answer to that, first of all. There's no, I mean, there's so many variables that go into it. There's no right or wrong answer. Personally, I like to mix it up because I go in, when I'm testing 10 campaigns, I go in thinking, okay, no matter how much I think these are good, most of them are going to flop. So when I go in with that attitude, I'd rather diversify my selection and go, okay, um, maybe scrapbooking is like the worst idea ever. I don't want to have all my campaigns in scrapbooking. So because of that. But after I get some winners, if I, if I start building up an audience, like I'm like, wow, I'm really great at selling to... Um, bowlers. Then maybe what I'll do is I'll try 10 different, I'll start researching tons of quotes and stuff like that and I'll get designs and I'll get 10 different styles of bowling shirts, run them all and see, see, how, see how well they do. And then eventually what you're really looking for, the home run where people make millions of dollars doing this and where pretty much most of my successful students have all come from, the home run is the template. You get, a, you get a, an original design before anybody else has a chance. People will copy you. You gotta also, that's another thing you gotta get used to. When you start being successful, people are just gonna straight up steal your stuff, it happens. But, uh, and that doesn't mean you should steal others. You wanna be the first person to break it. And you wanna, when you get good, you wanna break it and break it fast. When you come up with a template where something can be a blank and a blank and be swapped out, and it's good and it's original and you're selling it like crazy, as fast as possible, you template that thing out and you go do 50 shirts, 50 designs of that template, and you start running them, knowing some of them will lose and some of them will win, that's where the home runs are. The, the big money's in templates. It's not really in one-off shirt designs. Because you might do really well with a one-off shirt design and go, okay, I'm profitable now, I'm, I succeed. And then not get another good one-off shirt design. So you really want to get a template. Something where you could do a blank or an intersecting blank. Blank and blank, wine and scrapbooking. Okay? Any of your successful campaigns, do you ever come back periodically and run those again? Okay, so the question is, do you rerun successful campaigns? Yes. The answer is, without a doubt, yes. You want to milk that as long as you can. So let's say you do two weeks, and that thing is, is still selling. Instantly, turn it back on and run it again, run it again, run it again. Run it for as long as you can possibly run it for until it's no longer profitable. Run it all the way as long as you can. I mean, like your first run, you might sell 200 shirts, or your first winner, you might sell 200 shirts. But your second run, now that you're a little bit smarter, you tweak the ads, you fully focus on that one, you might sell 2,000 shirts on the next run. So that's what, actually, that's what happens a lot. You finally get the hang of it. And then you want to go fast because everybody's going to copy you, and they're going to be, people are going to be better than you at Facebook advertising. So they're going to see your design, they're going to eventually see it in the news feed, they're going to copy you, and then they're going to, next thing you know, you're, you're, you're wondering, like, why is this not converting well? Probably a lot of saturation to that an audience with the same shirt design but I would keep rerunning. Next question. Are there any fonts that are off limits to like popular products? The font looks similar. Is that uh, 
Would you run into a problem with that? Yeah, when you're, when, you could talk to your designer about that. The designer will generally know. Just say, hey, I want to make sure you're not using anything that's trademarked fonts or anything like that. Um, usually, if that, if that designer's paying for types of fonts or something like that, but fonts aren't really the issue. The issue is more involved with the graphics, the uh, elements that are on the thing. The graphics might be the issue. Like, <clears throat> even in those car examples, it's a little risque. It was a silhouette, but it's also a silhouette of a very recognizable, like, I think it was like a 67 Camaro. That's recognizable, so Chevy could have an issue with that. Um, there's stuff like that. You want to get as generic as possible as you can. Um, for example, this shirt right here, um, we did this as a shirt and as a necklace, and it got, it got copied um, hardcore. But like this horse heartbeat idea, um, it's, this, it's this basic concept of a template. It's a heartbeat, and then you put a silhouette of an animal in it, a dog, a cat, a horse, a pet of some kind, and um, it symbolizes the idea of love. The, the heartbeat symbolizes love, heart, and then the image. So it's like, I, like this shirt right here, in, in a way, suggests I love horseback riding. So um, horse in my heartbeat. So this, this kind of stuff right here, I mean, 1,300 sold, and this is still today. I and mean, these, are, these are like two years ago we were selling thousands of these, and they're still selling thousands today. It's just nuts. So, you come up with a template like that. So you would see this. You don't necessarily want to copy this person, though. But like, you look at this and go, that is like clip art 101, and yet sells thousands. I mean, it's a silhouette of a, of a horse. This is very safe. You really want to try to, you, you, sometimes you don't need to be too fancy. Stuff like this sells very well. And then what we did was, when we started seeing the saturation here, we started selling the, um, in the e-commerce modules, you guys go in, um, you'll, you'll learn about, like we stepped out of print on demand and we started doing um, necklaces like, like these right here, free plus shipping necklaces like this one. So then we said, okay, it's starting to get a little saturated. Well, well let's move away from t-shirts and let's just start selling them jewelry. So we took the same audience and started selling them because we already had the pixels built, we already had everything built up, started selling them jewelry. So just like this, the ho like, a, like a horse necklace, something super, super simple like that. So. Um, and this will be in another module, but I mean, look, this is only a dollar fifty-nine. Okay, so you know we'll charge like we'll give it away free plus nine ninety-five shipping and handling and make a profit on it. So just stuff like that. You move, you move. We 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 saw how good the niche was, and we moved away from it, <coughs> away from this, and into physical products, and still continued to make thousands of dollars. So there's an evolution. The evolution, in my opinion, um, I call it kind of like the Facebook ads evolution. It kind of goes a little bit along the lines of you start with print on demand. What we're talking about. And then you go to uh, e-commerce. And, and mostly we teach Shopify, but there's other e-commerce platforms. I mean, there's Amazon and stuff too. Okay, so you go from print on demand, what we're talking about. This is Facebook ads evolution. So you cut your teeth here. It's very easy. I mean, you, you saw how fast that was. Throw a design up on a shirt. Here's a page. Go target women who like horseback riding. Run your ad. You know, probably going to lose money because you just did it so fast. You're no good. But it's like, how fast was that? There's no effort. Setting up a Shopify store requires, okay, getting a Shopify account. Now you're paying monthly fees. You're creating a storefront. You're designing it. There's more that goes into it. You're trying to figure out shipping and handling and all this kind of stuff. But eventually, do e-commerce uh, with Shopify. And then even with this sub sub trend right there, um, you're going to start with like fr uh, where most people are going to start. They're going to start with free plus shipping. Okay, that's where they're going to start. Free plus shipping usually, and then they're going to move more into just like uh, actually selling. Selling, selling higher products, like $20, $30 products, stuff like that, once you feel comfortable. That's kind of the evolution there. Um, from e-commerce and Shopify, and then this actually even goes right here, I will say like private label. Private label is like, um, an example is, is my friend, here's an example, my friend Robert, right? Most of us learned our, cut our teeth on print on demand. This is where most of all the e-commerce people did. Then he goes into e-commerce and he starts finding these backpacks that 
uh, hikers and campers and stuff like that want that he finds that China can, dr can drop ship them you know, direct and he can make money. So he starts selling backpacks. Then in the comments, all the buyers are complaining that the zippers, when you walk with the backpack, the zippers are clingy, making all this noise and stuff like that. So he researched, he went to the, develop, he went to the manufacturer and said, can you make one with like the little rope zippers instead of the clingy zippers, you know, little rope ties, whatever, so, it's, so they're not clingy. And he said, sure. And then when he started looking at that, he's like, you know what would be even better? Why don't I just bulk order a whole bunch of these backpacks and put my own branding on them? And that's what he did. He eventually formed his own brand line of backpacks, called, I think called Monkey Packs, uh, I think is what he named it. And then he built up his own store that was based around these monkey packs, but also with people that are interested in hiking, camping, backpacking. So now he's selling them all kinds of related gear, survival gear, camping gear, all kinds of stuff. So now he's got this whole store and he's got this whole thing and it's themed under his brand, Monkey Packs. So he eventually went into private label where he's basically like ordering stuff in. He's got his own branding and everything kind of put on it, put it on it. Then he's shipping it out, two day delivery in the United States, no more coming from China. So the product comes from China to him and then from him to the customer. And that's kind of the evolution. That would be scary for a newbie yeah. to get into pre-ordering tens of thousands of dollars in inventory of backpacks and private. Like, how do you even do this? Where do you even, how do you even learn how to, how to ship? How do you handle refunds? Yeah, or print. So you start here. You start here and you, you sell some items to some, some camping audience, kind of get, cut your teeth with Facebook ads. Then you set up a basic store and you, and you drop ship. And you drop ship, you do free plus shipping. This is all taught to an impact. And then you go over here and eventually you kind of get into your own private label. And then you get into something where you're shipping from the United States, two days shipping. And then over here, then you get into, so you're, 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 you're basically branding. Then you get into, um, you know, things like branding, uh, list building. You know, you get into like hardcore stuff like conversion pixels. I mean, you get into basically, I'm just going to say like you can sell anything. And that's really where you get. You just get to the point where you can. And this is, this is where you want to be living right here. So like people ask me all the time, okay, well, Chris, teach me about print on demand or e-commerce or anything. But it's, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like you get to the point where you can essentially just kind of sell anything. And that's where now you hold power to be able to make money online from anywhere in the world. You don't have to worry so much. And you know, where I found my calling was more as the communicator, more as a teacher, trainer, speaker. That's more my calling. But a lot of my students have no desire whatsoever to ever get up in front of anybody. They just love to sit behind their computer and do this stuff all day. Um, a good friend of mine, Lawrence, who moves out here in a couple weeks, you know, a year ago, he didn't ha never even had any of this stuff. And he cut his teeth and print and demand, just like all of us. But then he graduated into his own store and then he graduated and built four stores. And now these stores are doing like tens of thousands of dollars a month each. And it's like a year ago, he hadn't even, he was just like all of us, just trying to figure it out. Just trying to figure out how it all works. So this is kind of the, this kind of the evolution. Print on demand kind of goes in your own e-commerce store, which kind of goes into now. Once you've got that kind of, you can actually sell anything. Somebody, if somebody said, hey, I got this affiliate offer that you can promote and be an affiliate, you could sell that in the Facebook newsfeed, no problem, because you've got these skills. And for e-commerce, there's kind of an evolution there. So it's kind of a weird diagram, but it, it just kind of illustrates that process. Let's do final questions. So if you were running like five, four or five shirts that were targeting the same audience, would you run them separately or would you run them in like a carousel for Facebook? I would run them separately. Uh, okay. I, would do all of my, um, I would do all of my marketing separately. The only real good way to split test is to run everything separately to know. Um, so if I'm doing 10 different shirts or 10 different anything or 10 what, selling anything, I want to do 10 as if they're standalone on their own and I want to see what works. Then when something doesn't work, that doesn't mean I never visit it again. I, if something doesn't work, I just kind of go, let me put my thinking hat on. Why might this not have worked? And I go to my four basics, which I told you guys earlier, design, targeting, urgency, scarcity. So I basically go into like, first of all, the design. I'll ask a couple people, like, be honest with me. Is this design good? Okay, because I might, a lot of us don't have an eye for design. We just don't. We think we do, and we don't. We think, oh, that looks really good. And then it's like everybody else looks at it and goes, really? Nobody would buy that. So we, that might be the reason. So your design might be off, in which case you go back to the designer, get something better. Your targeting might be off. Um, this right here, I might target women who like horseback riding. That might not be good at all. You know what might be a lot better? Women 
who are members of associations that have to do with horses in one way or another. That might be, so that might be like, just the horseback riding keyword term in Facebook might just be a dumb keyword. Maybe it's lumped in with too many things, but maybe there's like the trail riding um, uh, association of the Midwest and that has a million members. And maybe that trail riding association is that keyword that, oh man, that's the gold. Not just women who like horseback riding, but women who are members of the trail riding association of the Midwest or something. Now I found that gold, but I wouldn't know unless I was willing to throw money out there and experiment. And that's the problem with paid advertising. That's why people don't do it. They're afraid of just throwing money out there. But when you do crack the code, it could be 10, 30, 10 40, $50,000 profit. So um, I always test everything differently. When something's not working, I isolate it and see if it's even worth fixing. If something is working, then I keep it going, but I'll keep creating little side little ads that I, I'll, I'll take like that winner and I'll break it out to 10 new campaigns and try different um, audiences and stuff like that.